Okay, the exam is tomorrow. You, it's the same, you're doing the same thing that you did for the pre-test. You're going to go down to the basement of this building, PSA 21. You will need a sun card. You will need some, just any kind of calculator. It doesn't have to be a graphing calculator. There's a couple of questions where you might just have to, to punch some calculations, real simple, or not, not complicated. Um, but you're not bringing graphing calculator, you're not bringing your laptop with you, but the exam does cover um, some mathematical questions related to what we've done on graphing calculator so far. So, um, so I may give you some, some code lines and have you interpret them. Or I may say, here's what we want the end result to be, what, what should the code lines be, okay? But that's just about, it's just as much about the mathematics as it is about syntax, right? So. It's not about syntax, it's really about, just like this project was, getting you to think mathematically, how do we create that? Any more of these? Okay, so it's a mixture of multiple choice and free response. I would guess the average time is gonna be about 45 minutes, 45 to an hour, okay? It's a little bit shorter test. Some of you may be out of there in 35 minutes, others of you, you can take as long as you want. Some of you may take longer than an hour, that's perfectly fine. Take your time. I'm not trying to rush you. I'm just trying to give you a, a gauge of how much time you'll need. Average, I think, 45, 50 minutes. Um, what else? Oh, so, uh, and I'll make you a deal. So we're ha we've had very, very few customers in office hours. And so now things are going to start to accelerate in terms of difficulty. And uh, you're going to need extra support. So here's my deal. You're going to go somewhere into cyber world and find where my office hour and Marshall's office hours are, times, times and places, and make a printout of that. So you know where that is, get that printout. If you visit me during those office hours, and then him, in either order, doesn't matter who's first, bring that sheet with you to, to my office hours and to his office hours, and you complete that, then I'll give you one more percentage point on your exam, okay? So the, the, the purpose of this is to Kind of tear, tear the walls of fear down, of the, of the unknown, right? Where is this place? Will I get hurt if I go there? You know? So, no, you won't. Like, so, like, I'm just as nice in office hours, if not nicer, than I am in class. Okay, so, and you're going to need the support. You're going to need the help. So, we just got to get over that hump of, I don't want to, you know, do something new. You know, I don't like change, right? So, we got we to break out of that. So, all you have to do is come show up. Show me that you found that online. And then you can go to his first... He's up in the tower here in this building, and I'm in ECA. Go to him first, go to me first, doesn't matter. If you visit us both, then I'll give you one percentage point on your test. And then you'll feel like it's very accessible for you to come and get help, okay? All you have to do is walk in the door and say hello. That's all you have to do, show me the paper. Or, and then if you've got math questions, bonus, right? Wait, today? Oh, okay, so, so you can do it today, anytime from today through next Wednesday. So you have eight days to do it. I do have office hours today from 1.15 to 2.30, okay? But then the rest of them, it's, it's up to you to find, find that place where you can get all the information about his time and location, my time and location. Is it a deal? Okay, how about uh, questions about the graphing calculator project? Really important project, lots of ideas <coughs> that you had to think about, hopefully. Hopefully you figured some, some at least some, or if not all of this out yourself. If you're relying too much on the work of others, that's going to get you into trouble when it gets harder, okay? So the, the idea is you're really grappling with, okay, how do I, how do I get this? And, and, and also watch out for just lots of, I'm going to guessing and checking. You know, just like, I'll try this and see. No, it doesn't work. I'll try this. I'll try this. So, so think about it. Really think about it. What is going to, you know, it's perfectly obedient and it's totally stupid. You have to be the smart one and give it the, the right instructions, and it will do exactly what you tell it to do, okay? So you, you have the brains, and it's just, you know, it's, it's just your perfectly obedient robot, okay? Um, so hopefully, you know, there's this problem-solving aspect, and then you, before you run to someone else to, to get the answer, that you're thinking about it and figuring stuff out. What questions on this? Yes, sir. What were you looking for the last part where it said like remedy your triangle? Yeah, so we'll yeah, let's go kinda how about um we'll get to that at the end. Yeah. 
Oh, it's talking about, so it wouldn't, it, uh, well, let me take a look at yours personally if you want. So, okay, so we started by graphing the point. So this, in order to get any point, a roving point, we got to have this function notation, and we set the temperature equal to our slider n value, and then the expected attendance, you know, if n is changing, we can't put a number in there, right, because that's going to be changing too, and so that's what the function does. For every temperature we put in, it gives us the corresponding expected attendance out, and then this the, the double bracket will plot that point. So that's that point shown right there. Okay, so then we built the we built the triangle at 25. We talked about that last time in class, um, but now what? Now we want that triangle to move. Okay, so. We're no longer going to have the temperature be at 25, but what will the temperature or starting temperature be for our roving triangle? Yeah? We'll start zero. zero. But, but if it's a roving triangle, if it can go anywhere, then what's the temperature? N. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. It has to be N. N. So this is this thing we want to have control over the temperature to change it. So we're going to make that starting point N, and so then what is this value going to be right here? n plus 10. Now some people, you chose this to be n. It's okay, it'll work, um, but it's not really consistent with what we said. So if this is our point uh, for a temperature of n, and then we normally think of a change in temperature, we normally think of a change as an increase, okay? So we're going to start with this, this temperature here, and then we want an increase of 10 degrees. So that should be our n. So then what is our final temperature? 35? N plus, 10. N plus 10, right? N plus 10. Okay? And so then that ends up being the equation of that line. X equals N plus 10. So here are those two. Here's what makes the triangle. This is the temperature at N, starting at N and ending at N plus 10. And then this is a constant temperature of n plus 10 starting at our first expected attendance and ending at the new expected attendance when we increase the temperature of 10. So then at the end, any questions on that? That was really kind of the crux of it. What happens is, if you look, if you, <coughs> if you do that, and you kind of play around with it, you notice that over here, it doesn't show up. The question is, what's going So my last question on the assignment was, what's the problem? Why is it not showing up? And, and then how can we fix it? So what did you discover? What's going on? Tell me your name, sir. My name is Will. Will, OK. Um, it's because the parameters we have set up kind of set it up um, so that this is true so far it's, as it's increasing. But at point 70, it starts to decrease, okay. in which case um, A of N is not less than Y, which is less than A of N plus 10. In fact, it's the opposite. A of N plus 10 is less than Y, which is less than A of N. Okay, so where is, so here's our N value. What, where is A of N represented? Yeah, he's right on it. Where, where's, what is A represented by A of N here? Where is A of N? Can you describe it? So here, here's N. Here's our temperature N. What is it? It's 105 right now. Okay? So that's our temperature N. So what's A of N? How's it, how's it shown in the picture? How can we say it's shown in the picture? A of N. What? It's this height, right? It's just the height of that dot, or the height of this red line. Okay? Where's A of N plus 10? 10 higher than that? Is A of N plus 10 up here? A of N plus 10, which is this, we're talking about this value now, here. 
Is it up here? A of n plus 10? No, it's on the, the so, horizontal. Stuff. Yeah, so we're going to go plus 10 and n, and then what's A of n plus 10? It's this, right? So how do they compare? How does A of n compare to A of n plus 10? Less than. If we, over here, when it's hot, if the temperature goes up, what does the expected tendency go to do? It goes down, right? So if we increase the temperature, now our our expected tendency goes down, it's lower. And what are we trying to what are we telling it to do? We want to plot all y values that are what? Greater than this one and less than this one. So what will it do? What's it going to show you? All the y values greater than this and less than this. Yeah? What's the original constraints of the graph? Uh-huh. So now we're trying we're saying that y is between, y is greater than this one. Plot, it's saying, plot me all the points on this line so y is greater than this and less than this. What is it going to graph for you? It's going to graph all the way up to 70. So it's going to graph all the points that have y values greater than this one and less than this one. Which is what? Really? What is it? We want every y value that's up here and also down here. Say it. Nothing. There's none. You can't have a point up here and also down here. You can't say, you're not going to get anything if you, if you restrict y to be greater than this and also y to be less than this. That's why we're getting nothing. You see? Yeah. There's nothing there. How do we fix it? We want, so we got n plus 10. We want to show this segment. How are we going to fix it? Yeah, so, so now we want all the y values that are greater than this and less than this. So we need to flip those starting and ending values. <coughs> so all we do is do the same line again, but now we take, we want all the y values that are greater than a, this value and less than this value, which gives us that part of the line. So. It's telling you, undefined. Undefined. There's nothing defined. No y values defined if you were going to set up the, the inequality like that. If I scroll back, similarly, if I go back to the original thing now, this one's undefined. Why? Because there are no y values that are greater than this and less than this. So that's not going to show anything now. But the original one kicks in. Clear it up? Yeah, but I, I just was wondering because I did it a different way. Okay, we can look at it if you want. Does this, this make sense? You want to look at it. No, it's if you want me to. Oh, I mean, is, is it wrong <laughs> if we did something else? Because um, I mean, we got the same thing, I just didn't have to do another step. Like, it would invert the triangle by itself just by moving the slider. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, there's, there could be other ways to, yeah. yeah. All right, any other questions about this project, which is important for the exam? Okay. So you had to re oh, do we hand in reflections yet? So pass up the reflections. change is an absolutely key foundational concept in all calculus. Okay? Um, some of you have had calculus before, and to you it you know it's basically comes down to derivative or integral. Okay? Constant rate of change and rate of change is a key idea to both of those, to understanding both of those. Okay? So 
Um, not only is it critically important, but it's a multifaceted idea. There's so many different ways to, to understand and think about and talk about constant rate of change. So just for me, just preparing, even I've been teaching pre-cal for 10 plus years, calculus the same, and even just preparing these, these lessons and thinking about what I'm going to ask and, and uh, Getting ready, I'm even. I learn more all the time, so it's like I'm getting a better and better handle on it. So it's not something you know that you just learn in a week or learn in a couple of days and you got it. So we want to take take our time to really understand it and walk all all the way around this idea and look at it in different ways. So let me start with what's this statement right here. When we say delta y equals k delta x. What, when you see that, what is your interpretation, or what does that mean to you? Okay, so we're going to start learning names here. So tell me your name right here. Sastia. Sastia? Yeah. Tell me what, when you see that, just tell me one thing that that reflects to you, or what, what does that mean to you? The change in y is equal to the change in x times the multiple. Okay, so changes in y. Changes in y are a constant multiple of changes in x. Okay. Somebody else? Tell me your name right here. Uh, the back. You guys are next. The, uh, What's your name? Rich. Rich. So tell me something else that tells you. Okay. What else can we say? Yes, sir. What's that? Tell me your name. Connor. Connor. Uh, the, uh, you know that the rates of the x and y are varying together. Okay. So we've got this is this is telling us that y and x are are in some kind of relationship relative to one another. Can we be more specific? So what are quantities y and x? How are they related if that statement is true? Tell me your name. Um, Isabel. Isabel? Um, the two quantities are changing simultaneously, and um, each change is equal to one change in the other. Okay. Um, and then the other one is that the change in y is equal to the change in x. Okay, so you said two things there. So um, we could say delta, um, delta y is proportional to delta x. Changes in y are proportional to changes in x. Okay, and then so she was also talking about how they change together. So what is the relationship? <coughs> if changes in y are proportional to changes in x, what is the relation of y and x? Tell me your name. Jeff. Jeff. Changes in x are k times larger than changes in y. Okay, yeah, so that, um, exactly, and that's, um, we say it again, one more time. Changes in x is k times larger than changes in y. What do you think about that? Changes in x are k times larger than the changes in y. Is that a correct statement? The idea is great, but we got it. There's a problem. <coughs> Tell me your name. Jimin. Jimin? Yeah, it can be smaller. Okay. What about his statement that changes in X are K times the changes in Y? Tell me your name. Uh, Joe. Joe. Um, the changes in uh, Y are I'm going to go back to his statement. The changes in x, were you talking about this statement? Yeah, I just reversed it. So the, you're saying the changes in y are? Um, divided by, or, um, what is it? K times? Uh, divided by k are equal to x. OK. Go back. Changes in y are k times as much as the changes in x. So which is it? Is it? Changes in x are k times as much as the changes in y, or that the changes in y are k times as much as the changes in x? <coughs> See? Jeff? Changes in y are k times as much as the changes in x. You just said it in reverse. Do you see? Yeah, so, so it's not that the changes in x are k times as much as changes in y. 
changes in y are k times as much as the changes in x, okay? Which is similar to number one. So what's the relationship of y and x if the changes are proportional? Okay, well, how, exactly how? And what type of relationship? Tell me your name again. Katie, Katie and Will. Will. Will number two. I said it's a proportional by factor of k. Proportional by factor of k, that's true. What is this relationship between y and x? What kind of relationship do they have? Uh, so, so all functions have a deterministic. This is a very special relationship. Okay, true. It will be linear. So x and y will be a linear relationship. <coughs> Directly proportional. That's what we said, number two. So, okay. Okay, constant rate of change. This is, this is our constant rate of change. When changes are proportional, if the changes in y are proportional to the changes of x, that's when y and x are in a constant rate of change relationship. What is k? K is the constant rate. How is it evaluated? What is K equal to? Delta Y over delta X. And notice that's a quotient. Constant rate of change are, is a quotient. And so we want to go back and think about our meaning of quotient. So when we take that, take that, do that division, we're going to get a number. Reflecting back on our meaning of quotient, what does that number mean? It's the slope of the graph, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so if our x was time and our y was distance, it would be the speed of the car. That's right. But just in general, what does quotient give us? What does that say that number was 2.8? Pedro, um, relative size of one to the other? Which, so of which to which? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so 2.8 would be, if 2.8 were k, it'd be the relative size of the change in y to the change in x. What are we going to say? It's, it's the scale to which you make the two quantities in order to make a relationship between two quantities. Right. It's how much faster delta y is changing than delta x. These are changing together. But they make, they're, they're changing relative to one another, but they're not changing the same. So this, this ratio, this constant rate of change is how much faster or at what fraction is delta y changing than compared to delta x. So if it's 2.8, then y is changing 2.8 times faster than x is changing. If it's 0.3, then y is always, the change in y is always 0.3 of the change in x. It's always y is changing. 30% of the rate of, of x, okay? So what about, is there a difference between saying that the quantities are proportional and saying that the changes are proportional? So here, this says the quantities are proportional, right? This says the changes are proportional. Is that the same or is there a difference? Uh, there's a difference because um, in order for <coughs> the quantities to be proportional, there can't be like any initial value. Okay, yeah. So if the quantities are proportional, if one is zero, then what's the other? X is zero, then y has to be zero. If the quantities are proportional. Does that have to be true here? So say my y is like this, and my x is 0, when y is that much. 
Okay? Now, I can have a change in y from there. And I can have a change in x from there. Are the quantities x and y proportional? Just the, the quantities x and y themselves, are they proportional? Yes. Why? Okay, tell me your name. Calvin. Calvin. Do you agree with Calvin that x and y are proportional? If when x is 0, y is some initial value, say y1, then I'm going to have a change in x and a, change in, and a corresponding change in y. Are x and y proportional? I guess that's a good question. <laughs> Tell me your name right here. Put the glasses. Uh, Jeff. Jeff. Jeff number two. Uh, Are X and Y proportional? Yes. Yes? Will? I wouldn't think you could determine it. <coughs> but look, X is zero, right? If X is zero and there's proportional, what would Y have to be? Is it zero when X is zero? No. There's some initial amount of Y when X is zero. Can't be proportional. If two quantities are proportional, they both got to start at zero together and then grow in relative size the same. But here they're starting once y has a, a finite amount and x is zero. What about the changes in x and y? Are they proportional? Yeah. Can you tell from this picture? Tell me your name right here. Danielle. Danielle? So from what I've drawn, delta y and delta x are, can you say that the changes in x and y are proportional? Well, by the picture, no, but the change in the quantities, yes. Okay. Right behind her. Then go. I agree with you. I don't think that the picture shows that they're proportional, but delta y can change in the same delta x. Okay. So there's delta x2 and delta y2. You really need another set of changes to see if the changes are proportional, right? What would you say? My delta x2 is how compared to delta the first delta x? About one half. So therefore, that new change in y would have to be about one half of the old change in y. Is it? With you know some, give me some grace on the artwork. You know something like that, right? So this is about half of that change. This is about half of that change. So it doesn't matter what the original quantities x and y are in order for changes to be proportional. They could both be zero. One could not be zero, and the other would be zero. Okay. So you can have constant rate of change, or the change is being proportional, with any initial amount that you want for those two initial quantities, x and y. Anybody have a question? OK, so my spruce tree grew 14 feet, while my cedar tree grew 11 feet. And they grew at a constant rate with respect to each other. What are? x and y in this statement. So when we say what are x and y, we want to define, actually we're saying we want to define what they are, not their values. But what does the quantity y represent, like as a statement, as a phrase, as a change in quantity? So what, right here in the corner, tell me your name. Josh. Josh? So what does y represent in this situation, or what do you want it to represent? The length of the spruce tree. Okay, height of the spruce tree. Is that a changing quantity? In 
feet. Okay? So x height of the cedar tree in feet. It asks, does the, do the trees start at the same height? So it's basically saying, in this particular situation, what is the value of y? What is the value of x in the given situation? Tell me your name, Riker. Crystal. Crystal? Value of y is 14, value of x is 11. Tell me your name. No, in the class shirt, yep. What is it? Anon. Anon? Yes. Do you agree that 11, uh, y is 14 and x is 11 in this situation? Yeah. Anybody disagree? Tell me your name in the back. Kim? Kim? Um, I mean, it says that it's a key and it's a key. Okay. So is the number 14 feet, is that the y value? Yes. What is it? It's a change in y, right? This is saying how much it grew. And we said y represents just the, the current height of the tree. All right? So did the tree start at the same height? What's that? Go ahead. Uh, we don't know. We don't know. What do we, well, all we know is they're growing at a constant rate with respect to each other. That's all we know. We don't, but we don't know where they started. Could they have started at the same height? Could they have started at different heights? Absolutely. Okay. What are delta y and delta x in this statement? Andrew. Uh, the change in, in height from the initial uh, kind of height of the tree. Which tree? Which you got? We got two trees. And which one are you talking about? So the cedar. Uh, what's the change in y? Could be the initial height from the uh, initial. Well, slow down. Slow down here. Okay. The change in y is what? So what is the change in y in this case? It's the change in height of the cedar tree. Change in height of the cedar tree. From the initial uh, height to the final height. What was y again? Y. It's the height of the spruce tree. So tree. what's the change in y? The change in height of, of, the spruce tree. of the spruce tree. You said the cedar tree. Oh, sorry. Okay, so delta y is the change of height of the spruce tree. And what is it in this statement? 14. 14. Okay, what does delta x represent? Change in height of the cedar tree, and it is? 11. What is k? Is it Savannah? Is that right? What's k? Okay, the rate, that, well, like the rate, like per day, like how many feet per day, or? What's your name right next to her? Charles. Charles? So what, what is K in this situation? 14 over 11. 14 over 11. So K is delta Y over delta X. OK. What is that number, 14 over 11? There's 10 ways, 10 different ways we can say it. Well, number one. Okay, it's a quotient. What does that quotient mean? What does that quotient 14 over 11 mean? Okay, so for every change of height of the spruce tree of 14, there'll be a change of height of the cedar tree of 11. What about that as a, as a single value? Uh, Isabel? All right. Um, for every, I think, what, the fact that um, cedar tree grows, okay. the spruce tree will grow 14. For every one foot that the cedar tree grows, the spruce tree will go 14 11 foot. What do you think about that? She likes it. <laughs> What's that? It's your constant rate of change. Okay, let's, so what is the, let's actually get a decimal approximation for that number. Is it 1.2 something? Crank it up.
1.2 what? Somebody's got a calculator nearby? 1.27. So, she said for every one foot that the cedar tree grows, the, the spruce tree will grow 1.27 feet. Agree with that? Well, that's what's another way you can interpret 1.27. It came from a quotient, right? It's a quotient. So how can we interpret that 1.27 in another way? What's our meaning of quotient? Calvin. Um, Calvin. The ratio of the, uh, the trees, or the ratio of, sorry, the rate of the spruce tree um, relative to Okay. That's all right. I had it in my head. Okay, all right. Uh, the height of the spruce tree will increase by 1.27 feet for every one foot the cedar tree grows. Right, okay. That's so the height of the, the um, spruce tree will grow 1.27 feet for every one foot that the cedar tree grows. How, how is this a comparison of how they're growing? What can you say? Jeff? Did you say that the spruce tree grows 1.27 <coughs> He said, can you say this? The spruce tree grows 1.27 times faster than the cedar tree. What do you think? <coughs> Remember that delta y equals, in general, equals what? If we have constant rate of change? K, k delta x, and our k is? 1.27. Changes in the spruce tree height will always be 1.27 times changes in the cedar tree height. So does that mean that the spruce tree is growing 1.27 times faster than the cedar tree? You say no? Why? Why not? But so, but it's always in the, so we always have a, a certain amount of time. There's going to be the changes are going to be in the same amount of time. Yeah. So we're going to fix an amount of time. It doesn't matter what that amount of time is. We're going to fix it. That change in the height of the spruce will be 1.27 times the change of the height of the cedar. So can we say that the cedar is the spruce is growing 1.27 times faster than the cedar? Yeah, we can. That's exactly. That's, that's the idea. Relative change, right? Relative change. That number 1.27. What if that number was 50? How would the situation be different? So if the relative change was 50, tell me what would be different. What's your name? Yeah. You tell me? If that were 50, how, could, how would the situation be different? Yeah, so now rather than, that's not a decimal point, that's. <coughs> so now if it's, this is 50, then the cedar tree grows a little bit, and what does the spruce tree grow? Do? <laughs> it cruises up, right? It's a greater relative change. So you have a much greater change in the spruce tree relative to how much the cedar tree grows. So are these, these are almost the same. It's like they're both kind of growing together, it's just that. <coughs> the spruce tree grows always 27% more than the other one, or 1.27 times as much. Relative change, that's what that number is, relative change. Okay, I got a race. <coughs> so what do we got? We got that... Uh, Summarize here. Delta Y is 14 elevenths, delta X. And we said that number is how much faster the spruce tree is growing relative to the cedar tree. 1.27 times as fast. It's also, if the cedar tree grew one foot, the spruce tree would grow 1.27 feet. Okay. 
Now here's a different situation. So now the cedar tree has grown two feet. My spruce tree grew two elevenths of 14 feet. Two is two elevenths of 11. So when my cedar grew two elevenths of 11 feet, my spruce tree had grown two elevenths of 14. In fact, whenever the cedar grows two feet, the spruce grew two eleven of 14. What are delta y and delta x in this statement? Somebody knew. How about here? And that, and that, and that. Tell me your name. Yeah, tell me your name. John. What is it? John. John. What are delta y and delta x in this statement? Remember, y was the height of the spruce. So what is delta x in this case? What was delta x? Um, 2 11 to 14. Is that delta x or delta y? Delta Y will be the change in which tree? Spruce. Spruce. Which is? Delta X is? Two. Right? This will be the change, the new change in the cedar, uh, cedar tree. And it's saying that the new change in the spruce tree will be two elevenths of 14. So. Darn it. Uh, so I'll just write it right here. 2 is 2 elevenths. That's the key to this. Why is it important in this example to observe that 2 is 2 elevenths of 11? What's happening here? So 2 elevenths, that's not our, that's not our value of k. We know 14 elevenths is our constant rate of change here. So it, why, why is it important to note that 2 is 2 elevenths of 11? Will? Uh, because the cedar tree now has grown 2 feet, and so comparatively to our prior example, okay. um, it has to account for before it grew 11 feet. Right. Um, Did you hear that? Well said. The new change is how compared to the old change in just the cedar tree? Two elevenths <laughs> of it, right? So what is the quotient two elevenths? It's also a quotient. So if it's a quotient, it's a, it's a, it's a relative size, right? What is it the relative size of? <coughs> what is 2 11ths the relative size of? How about someone new? How about right in the corner back there? Thank. What's your name? Bailey. Bailey. What is 2 11ths if that's a quotient, it's a relative size? What is that a relative size of? Between the change in x and change in y. How about in the baseball shirt? Agree with that? Yeah. So one of these is a change in x and one of these is a change in y. How about behind Jeff in the red tank? What's your name? Yeah. First, it's the relative size of the old change to me. In what? In of what? Of which tree? Of the cedar tree. The it's the relative change of the size of the old change of the cedar tree to the new one. So it's the relative size of the old change and the new one. The new, the new change in the cedar tree is 2 elevenths of the old change of the cedar tree. And what does constant rate of change mean? That we have what? If we have constant rate of change between quantities x and y, we have Okay, More, much better than that though. What's your name? LJ. LJ. How do they change simultaneously? 
How would the changes in x compare to the changes in y? The same constant rate. Proportionally, right? So if the old change, if the new change in the cedar tree is two elevenths of the old change in the, in the cedar tree, then what about the spruce tree? <coughs> Can someone make a complete statement to finish this off? We've got the old change in the cedar tree, 11 feet, and now the new change in the cedar tree just grew two feet more. And so that, the relative size of that change in the cedar tree is two elevenths. So what happens with the spruce tree? Can someone say it all together? What's your name? Adra. Adra. Um, since that one changed by an increment of 2 and before it changed an increment of 11, then the 14 will also change by 2 elevenths. If the change in the height of the cedar tree changes by 2 elevenths, then so will the height of the spruce tree. So will the height of the spruce tree. The changes are proportional. If you scale the, the change in x by 2 elevenths, you've got to scale the change in y by 2 elevenths to get the corresponding change of, in this case, the spruce tree, if the cedar tree grew 2 feet. OK. Any questions? See if we can make a little headway in this one. So you worked on this fish one. We got the <coughs> average number of fish per day, starting and ending. Water temperature, starting and ending. What is delta y in the statement? What is delta x and what is k? Okay. How about right here in the gray shirt? Yeah. Um, what is delta y? Is it the average number of fish? The change in the average number of fish. And what is that in this case? Can you give me how you would calculate that? How about in front of Will? What's your name there? In front of Will, in the white, with the white, yeah. What is the change in the average number of fish in this question? How could we calculate it? All right, well done. OK, so it's going to be the, the final value minus the initial value. That would be the change in the number. Of, and what does delta x represent? Change in what? I'm getting smart now. I'm writing up on the top. <laughs> and how could we calculate that change in temperature? OK. What is K? I think it's safe here. What is it? Delta Y over delta X. So that's going to be? That's our, going to be our numerator or denominator? Numer. Numerator. OK? And so if we have, the, we have a change in y and the corresponding change in x, we can find what those values are, and we can get k. So I'm going to do it fast. 109.7. That's the whole fraction? That's the top part? OK. Over equals 43.88. Is that right? Interpret that number. 43.88. That's our value of k. So in this, what does it mean? 43.88. How many fish you get per degree if you go along? If, if the water temperature goes up one degree, the average number of fish will... Increase by 43.8. Another way to say it. Relative change of 43.8. Relative change. And what is that? So what does that mean, relative change? That Yeah. The relative change of fish um, in compare coupled with the a change in temperature is 43.8. Right, or or the average number of fish is increasing. 
point three times, times four. as fast as temperature. Yeah. So that the average number of fish is increasing forty eight three point eight times as fast as temperature increases. Okay, don't have time for that. Okay. Remember your bonus activity, finding our office, and then don't forget your exam tomorrow. You don't have recitation, but we will have class. Forty five Friday, the recitation, no recitation. Yeah. Can you go back to the last slide? Sure. Well, let me turn this off.